Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Thriving Adoptees podcast. So today I'm delighted to be joined by our first guest from the Netherlands, from Holland. So, uh, Cynthia, great to see you. Thank you very much. And congratulations on being the first person from your country to come on. Thank you. <laughs> it's an honour. Um, uh, the Dutch, uh, I was in a language school back in, uh, in, in uh, back in 1985, that's a long time ago, um, uh, learning German in, uh, in Cologne, in the north of Germany. Uh, and I had lots of Dutch friends. I met lots of Dutch friends there. And I, I don't think I met many Dutch people before then. But I, I think, um, yeah, our sense of humour is somewhat similar. Um, yeah. <laughs> we like culturally, I think we're quite, uh, you know, we're quite aligned. Uh, generally speaking, perhaps Dutch people as a big generalisation, a little bit more liberal, a little bit more left leaning, perhaps than, than Brits. But culturally, I think we both, yeah, we both like, we both like going out. Yeah, true. Drinking. Yeah, (laughs) drinking. And we like uh, football. And, um, you know, and some, uh, I'm obviously a pro-German person. (laughs) I'm the most pro-German British person that I know. I've spent a lot of time in Germany. I've got a lot of time. But um, some people are less you know it's the it's the enemy the football again you know the football the football always the football you know <laughs> um and i think the dutch and the english have the same thing with german football and and i'm waffling now so anyway this show is supposed to be about adoptions but welcome to the show what about football <laughs> we can talk about football <laughs> i don't know anything about football Me so, welcome to the show thank you for making time today i'm looking forward to it um, we're recording this on, on Zoom so I can see Cynthia, uh, Cynthia's uh, great, massive smile. She's just got, like, she lights up the room. So we're in for a treat. <laughs> You're in for a treat, listeners. So, Cynthia, <laughs> I please, hope so. You, oh, no. What, how, how am I going to live up to this now? He's built me <laughs> up. <laughs> we'll just do just that. Um, so, uh, Cynthia, can you tell uh, the listeners a little bit about yourself, please? Yeah, sure. Uh, so I'm Cynthia. I'm uh, 27 years. Um, I live in the Netherlands, in the middle of the Netherlands, so it's in a small town. It's famous for the glass and for the cheese, actually. Okay. So some people might know it, it's called Leerdam. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah, we've heard of Leerdam, yeah. yeah. Yeah, right, for the Leerdam and cheese. Yeah, yeah. And, and the glass, right? Yeah. Uh, for the rest, well, I was, I'm adopted since I was six months old from China. Yeah. Um, and I grew up in like a very small village, sort of close by Leerdam. Uh, with my parents and my brother, who is adopted from Sri Lanka. Right, wow. And in my daily life, I am a consultant in the area of data privacy. Yeah. yeah. And I like to play guitar and I can talk a lot, a lot but I don't know uh, yeah. if there's anything particular. Yeah. Um, Sri Lanka and China, what a cosmopolitan yeah. household. Yeah, cool. <laughs> definitely. Yeah. Plus, my mom is like really short. She's like 159 or something in, in terms of meters. Right. And my dad is almost two meters. And uh, she told me that uh, that when we were little, we were walking in the in the village, like it was very, very uh, standard village with a lot of farmers. Yeah. And then she had her aunt uh, coming over from Germany. Yeah. And the aunt was, um, she was in a, is it in a bishop? I don't know how it's called, but the, that you are in, the, I think it's in a bishop, right? So the, 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 she had this very uh, formal clothing on. Right. So she had this very tall guy, a very tiny girl, like a, a random old lady in formal clothing. Yeah. And then a Chinese kid and an Indian looking kid. <laughs> and wow. we were walking in the streets. <laughs> but right. we were the only college children. <laughs> yeah, it's like, a, it's, an out, it's like a mini United Nations, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Brilliant. I love it. <laughs> you know, we hear so much about struggles with transracial adoptees and stuff like this. <laughs> it just seems so joyous, you know. You're laughing at <laughs> this uh, this picture, this this fond memory of your of yourself. So, um, yeah, and uh, so Cynthia and I got in touch um, through you. You work uh, uh, well, not work. You, but this it's uh, what's it called? Adopt, adopt, adoptedia. Adopted. 
Adopsipedia. Adopsipedia. So it's like Wikipedia, but then with adoption in, yeah. in Dutch, so Adopsipedia. Yeah, okay. And so I got in touch with uh, that organization and they said, the person that you need to speak to is Cynthia. No, they didn't. They said, we'll see if anybody's interested. <laughs> you said, yeah, okay, I'll speak to this slightly strange <laughs> guy. And we had a conversation. It must have gone okay because you're here. Yeah. Now on the podcast, yeah, it must have gone okay. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, uh, so thriving, thriving adoptees, uh, thriving adoptees. Does that, have you, do you have this word in, in, do you have a word, equivalent word in Dutch? Um, yeah, well, I think we have, a, yeah, we, do, we do have a translation of it, but I don't know what the best translation of it, but I do know what you mean okay. by it. All right. Well, but... um, that's really interesting because I've just done a podcast, just did another recording mm -hmm. uh, earlier on this afternoon, and uh, I'd never thought about how I would sum up thriving in, 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 like, um, in a sentence. So I know that I've got mine. Um, well, I've got it in two words actually. So can you can you put it in one word? Can you beat my in topic? one word? Yeah. Ooh, um, let me think. What it means to you? If not, it's okay. Just say it in a sentence. It's okay. I would say it's maybe a bit strange, but personal success potentially. So yeah. not like the objective success, but that you that you uh, think you are successful yourself and it doesn't matter how you look at it it can be from a business perspective can be from a emotional perspective or whatever kind of perspective but that you yeah. accept yourself and think you are successful that you succeeded yeah okay. i think yeah yeah um a bit longer i guess than your two no, words no no that's <laughs> great but uh, you know uh, personal yeah personal success i like that I like that. I, I like it. I can break it down. Um, so mm -hmm. it's personal. It's not impersonal. It's down to us. It's yeah. like what we consider. Um, now, that's going to be an issue for everybody, isn't it? Because uh, we've got all these expect. you know, not everybody, like not just adopted people. I mean, for everybody, like success. So what does it mean? And then we could go down a, a real rabbit hole with that. Yeah. We could go down. We could talk about... Um, you know, society's expectations and our parents' expectations and our teachers' expectations and teaching us, yes. teaching us, tell, you know, and, and um, people telling us will never amount to anything and us having to prove it wrong and da 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 da. Mm -hmm. But no. But therefore, not. personal success, right? That you going? think that you personally yeah. succeeded according to your own standards for success? Yeah. And how you yeah. want to interpret that and how you want to explain that? Okay. Yeah, yeah, I like that. So, so personal and success. So success in whatever, whatever way we uh, come to it, whatever, however we define it. So it's a personal. Yeah. It's an. It, it's it's nothing to do with anybody else. It's about what we think, uh, and and success is what we make it. What what was mm -hmm. what we it is right. So, the one I came up with was loving life. Yes. That's also a good one. That one is a bit broader, I think. So loving life, it's a bit broader, I think, yeah. than, than personal success. Because the personal success is really like about yourself, maybe. Loving life is also, I don't know, do they have a little bit of a different connotation to it, I think? A little bit of a different yeah. thing. So uh, I would say... So to you, they seem different. To me, personal success for me is loving life. Yeah. You know, so it would be the same thing. Maybe it is similar. How I, what, about what comes to my mind when you say that, I think that for me, the personal success is also like the personal acceptance and that you think that whoever you are is good enough for you and is, is successful in that mm -hmm. sense. But I do think you can accept yourself and think you are accepted accepting that you um i think you can accept yourself and think you are successful according to your own standards but not necessarily love life i oh. think oh, potentially okay, okay. <laughs> right um your english is fantastic 
absolutely <laughs> superb so i'm going to push this a little bit further here right i'm going to just this is going to go a bit weird right but just bear with me right so who's the you that who's the we that's judging us who the we is that is judging who's the us? we that's judging us and then oh that is a that is a difficult question sorry are we I, 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 I'm kind of going somewhere with this, right? Mm -hmm. So there's this phrase, uh, there's this phrase, um, getting in our own way. Have you heard this phrase? Mm -hmm. You know, I want, uh, you know, like I want to change the world, right? I want mm -hmm. to change the world. I want uh, every uh, adoptee to, to love themselves, um, but I'm getting in my own way. Mm -hmm. You heard that phrase, getting in my own way. That yeah yeah that you're blocking yourself you mean is that yeah. is that what but you mean? How is that, that even possible? That you're blocking yourself, that you're well, getting in your yeah, own just, way. Well, yeah. it can happen, I think. It can. Okay, but I'm just thinking like really really simple. So, so like this is like we use these phrases, and I'm just mm -hmm. playing with this phrase. So actually, if you thought about that physically, right? How could I get in my own way? Yeah, physically it's not necessarily possible. Physically, it's not possible. <laughs> but mentally and in other ways, you can get in the way of yourself potentially, or at least you can get in the way of achieving your own goals that you set by being you potentially. Uh, if that doesn't help you with your goal, or if other people interpret you in a certain way or put certain um judgments on you based on who you are or how you handle things and that could get in the way in your own way of achieving whatever you want and then you are in your own way getting... okay i'm going to break this down really simply because there's so much in what you just said right and um, and um, so i'm going to give you a little theory here this is something i've okay. been thinking about right so you're not you haven't been maybe you have been thinking have you been do you think about this stuff um well, not necessarily this question, but I do like to think about this kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. I do like philosophy. All right. Okay. So I'm going to say um, that we can't actually get in our own way. What is actually happening? Because we're not two people. I, I, mm -hmm. you know, physically, we can't do it. So if it's mentally, then what it is, there is a, a thought is in our way. So we are the... We are the guy or girl running to towards the door, and there is a thought. the The thought is like a door in the way, right? Mm -hmm. Now, that so th that's it's not it's not it's not a separate thing to us. Yeah, it's it's one of our thoughts. It, it, so, it might it might be a thought that's been there for a long time. So that uh, is, but it's maybe... nevertheless a thought. Yeah. So, so they it's a thought you actually. Or a yeah, or a belief like some, some people say that oh well, yeah it's a limiting belief so a thought or a limiting belief is mm -hmm. what gets in our way it's not us getting in our way it's a thought getting in our way does that make any sense yeah it does but then you i think it also in the if you if you take that one step further then most probably you also if i understand it correctly right then most probably it's it, requires just a mindset change in that sense to indeed start thinking the way uh, you think that it's just a thought that is in our way because thoughts you can change or you can uh, rethink it or re, re, yeah, rethink it and then it will no longer be in your way but it will just be an additional step in your way. Yeah, yeah. I, th I think if we realize that it's just a thought, then then that might open the open the doorway you know open mm -hmm. the door if we realize it's not us that's getting in our way yeah it's a thought that we have it might be a really repetitive thought it might be a really it might be a re, it might be a thought that's really it's, it's it's really it's got roots in it it's got roots mm -hmm. to it we think it's really real we think it's really real we've been thinking this thought for so long mm -hmm. um that uh, that it, it's it's getting in it's getting in our way until we realise it it's just a thought. Yeah, you know? I, I like that way of thinking. It's it's a good one. Um, I, yeah, it's a good one. 
so we've got thoughts you know like thoughts come and go right mm -hmm. but then we've got um we've got limiting beliefs right yeah. so that's just like a really big thought but that mm -hmm. seems more okay i've got this limiting belief you know um and i'm i'm, I'm going somewhere with this so <laughs> I, I think the biggest repetitive thought for all people right all people is they're not good enough yeah they're not or that they enough. can't do it right or they can't do it they're not good enough they can't do it so they can't do something so they can't achieve something in the world or they're not good enough so you know mm -hmm. like so i'm not good at, so for years right i thought i wasn't good enough at sales ah uh, yeah yeah so, so that led me that led me to hire 10 different salespeople mm -hmm. and um and you know say so those people lasted on average four months well let's say six months on average then then i wasted five years of salary you know 10 people times yeah. half a year salary so i wasted five years salary on sales people that didn't work out and most of them didn't last six months but you know some of them lasted a few months mm -hmm. but at the, i did that because i didn't think i was good enough in sales i didn't think i was good enough um i i didn't think i was good enough so i thought i'd hire somebody that was better and then but eventually and then i went into it i was actually better than i did better results than them so i thought kind of the thought didn't change until i actually got the proof till i saw the numbers um so there's like not you know we can't do it like we can't do it so we can't launch a business we can't um fall in love and meet the person of the our dreams we can't um get that job we can't you know so we've got i think it's quite funny that you said it because when i was really young i well, i started playing the violin and my violin teacher she told me that i was never allowed to say that i can't do it because she said i you it's, it's you have to say i can't do it yet because you will get there so yeah. i i it reminds me a bit of that that you can do everything it's just maybe at that point in time not yet but if you practice if you try then you will be able to do it indeed so do you know where that comes from uh well it's from my violin teacher yeah yeah but you know where she she, she no. got it from okay well she might have come up with it herself of course or Maybe. he yeah come. Uh, but there's a there's an educational science sci, uh, there's an educational um psychologist she's she's very well known in the states and the uk she called carol dweck and she's got this thing called the growth mindset right? oh yeah i know that one yeah and and, and uh it, it's a it, it it's a great book i listened to the book all the way through and essentially you've just summed it up uh, in mm -hmm. one sentence <laughs> right? and that's all you need to know really but you need to know that kill it kind of like you need to know it at a deep level so like you you've obviously remembered that because it's mm -hmm. from your violin from ages ago when you were a kid um and so it stuck with you so there's there's knowing something and remembering it and like you know how how deep how, how deep do we know how, how deep it, do we believe that to be the truth so yeah we can't do anything yet but where I'm kind of want to go with this kind of like we're not good enough um, for me is because I've done most of my learning with non-adoptees, right? And they mm -hmm. with non-adoptees and none of them think they're good enough either. Right? Yeah. And we've but we've got this thing here as adoptees that we don't think we're we're good enough. And we, we've got a really good we've got a really mm -hmm. good reason. Like I've got a very compelling reason. I, ha I had a very compelling reason to believe that I wasn't good enough. And we have, because we were, you know, we were relinquished. We were, uh, we were, we were given away. And. Uh, but that's also a mindset, I think. Well, it, th that is, I, I think it's, I think it's deeper than mindset. I think it's like, it's false. It's just a lie. Yeah, true. But do they, I think, so if you say it's deeper than a mindset, yes, because they say biological, but biologically, if you are really uh, young and your mother or your parents abandon you, then you will 
always have the idea that you have been abundant and that will have an impact and that you will think that you're not good enough, that those kind of things. But then I think it is a mindset to actually believe that or to actually act like that because you can also sort of rethink that because I don't think I ever thought I'm not good enough. I just think, well, okay, yeah, maybe they abandoned me, but they uh, must probably have a better future in, life, in mind for me. Or they just couldn't care for me. So they, because they really loved me, they just gave me away yeah. or it is a better future. Yeah. So I think that's the, the mindset, it, uh, the mindset in that sense that, yes, some people I know, they think I wasn't good enough. People didn't want me. So what did I do wrong? But other, yeah, other people don't have that mindset indeed, but you can have a, a more positive mindset about it as well. Maybe. Uh, incorrectly, right? It might not be. Uh, it might not be justified to have that ma- mindset because maybe you were indeed not good enough. But as long as you don't know, you can you can sort of tell yourself or convince yourself to think the positive way. Yeah, I mean th- this is the this is the es- this is the essential conversation. Mm-hmm. This is the essential conversation we're having, whether whether we think whether we think we're good enough the extent yeah. to which we believe that we're good enough the extent to which we uh are at peace with that mm-hmm. and um and i i it think ties, it, sorry I, I was going to say it ties quite well with what i mentioned that uh thriving means that you are successful according to your own standards i think um because if you if you are indeed in your mind um meeting your own standards and therefore successful in your own standards then you won't have that thing anymore that just that you think i'm not good enough because if you as long as you have that maybe you're not yet thriving but if you uh, get to accept it that yes you are good enough because these are the things that are important to me and i do that i can do that so and that and that you accept that maybe Maybe you don't have the best job. Maybe you don't have the biggest house, but the house is perfectly fine for you. And the job is really nice, right? And then if you accept that and think, yes, I'm actually successful because I'm happy with my life. That so loving life a little bit still, yeah? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it, it this is, this is fascinating. Well stuff. Fascinating, fascinating stuff. I'm going to uh, just bring the two things together. To, mm-hmm. for, for me for ultimate simplicity right yeah taking what you said and what i said putting them together right so if there's anybody listening um that doesn't think that they're good enough then i'm gonna encourage them to 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 think about whether that's just a thought is that just a thought is that just a thought or is it you know like is it a limiting is it a limiting belief or is it the absolute truth that that you dear listener think like if you're getting angry if if anybody's getting angry with me pointing that out to them i'd say well How can this guy say that 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 I'm wrong to think I'm not good enough? Well, I guess why I say that is because I think that everybody on the planet is perfect. So I'm I'm I'm, I'm going further than just good or good enough. I'm going to absolute perfection, right? So we, I believe that we're all, I, I believe that we're, we're all perfect. Uh, and so we're all perfect little um, glistening, sparkly diamonds. And that, that perfection is, however, uh, sometimes obscured by the horrible th- thoughts in our head the horrible feelings that we that we have and some of the stuff that we do when we've got 
rubbish in our head, rubbish in our hearts, and we go out and do some, we wreak havoc, wreak havoc on the world. So that's kind of my, that, that's my philosophy on, uh, on, on human, on the, on the human beings or that, that thing that, you know, we're the, we're not, we're not human beings having a spiritual experience We're spiritual beings having a human experience, the spiritual, the spiritual being is the, is, is another way of saying the diamond, the perfection and the human experience is the fact that we go through life and SH1T happens. SH1T gets in our head. SH1T gets in our heart. Um, life is a contact sport, you know, uh, stuff gets us up and up and down but underneath all that is this perfection that who uh, of, of, the, of who we are so what what do you make of all that Cynthia uh, well there's a lot of thoughts going in my mind <laughs> <laughs> brilliant because, I love it go for it yeah <laughs> ask me some questions <laughs> well the thing is when you say perfection I think perfection also is such a it's a it's a kind of word that also has a, a meaning to it, or people put a meaning to the word perfection. Yeah. Uh, whereas sure. Sure. I do think yeah. that the way you think that perfection, where people are perfect, is not the standard way of how people think perfect. Because when people think perfect, or when they hear perfect, they think it's this objective measure of perf uh, perfectness. Whereas I think maybe this this perfect one again is a subjective one that you're perfect uh, in a sense that you are the best you, but not the objective perfect perfection, right? Okay, yeah, yeah. Like so that. That, that that came to my mind because if people aim for per, per, uh, perfection, they in general aim for these. Well, these very standard perfection criteria, right? That's the whole society thinks you are perfect if you meet this. And that is, it's different in all kinds of cultures, right? What is perfect, uh, perfect in the Netherlands is maybe not perfect in, in Africa or, or in Asia, most likely. But people will strive, if they, in, in a lot of cases, for perfection, for the perfection that they know in their society. Okay. Whereas I do think perfection, how you describe it as well, can also be just Again, the perfect being perfect according to your standards and what you okay. think is perfect. Yeah. So uh, where I'm coming from with perfection is I'm. You talked about the objective. I'm not talking about. I'm not talking about. Um, you know, you've got, when I'm talking about the spiritual versus physical thing, right? Spiritual mm -hmm. versus very physical. So my body isn't perfect. I'm actually double your age. I said that last time, didn't I? Well, <laughs> yeah, could be. Yeah. You said 27. I said I'm 54. I'm twice your age, right? Okay. <laughs> so my body is not perfect. Um, mm -hmm. My hair is starting to go grey. Um, my hair is starting to recede, and I swim a lot. So my my hair is absolutely knackered by the chlorine in the swimming pool, right? So my ha my hairdresser, uh, when she comes, she says. I don't know what I can do with your hair, Simon. It's, it's a terrible state. You need to use all this stuff. And she keeps on recommending all this stuff and it doesn't work right. So that's the, my body is not in uh, in tip top uh, condition. So mm -hmm. I'm carrying a bit of extra weight. I should be, I'm not, I've got some slight um, muffin tops on my jeans. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, like, yeah. So, so, but though, that's in the objective. That's in the objective. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the spiritual. The and, and so the uh, I'm not talking about um, perfection in the objective in the world of objects. I'm talking mm -hmm. about the, the uh, perfection in the spiritual bit in terms of the essence of who we are is that true, true, true perfection. I'm, I'm not. Um, yeah. And so I'm not talking about what I you know, the, what I, what I do in life or about anything about my body. Mm -hmm. I'm just talking about that, that deeper kind of stuff underneath. So, yeah. Um, I think it's good to make a distinction indeed, uh, because if people hear per perf uh, perfection, then people might think of the, um, of the, the, indeed the, the standard thing of perfection. And if I do think indeed, if people would start to think of perfection in the way you do uh, like the more spiritual kind of thing and if they aim for that or if they want that because you well you say everyone is that already then also I think the 
acceptance of people themselves will be easier because they no longer have to strive for that objective thing of perfection, which is very more difficult to achieve, I think, and all, only there for a small amount of people if you really have the societal perfection yeah. things. Fascinating. Fascinating. That can help people if they if they would look at it like that indeed. And then if they would strive for that perfection or if, if they indeed change their image of what perfection means, then you most likely I would hope, or at least I would say I would think you have less people who think they're not good enough. Fingers crossed, eh? Yeah. Fingers crossed. So um in um you said that you never you never felt uh, you'd had that feeling of not being good enough. Yeah. No, not that not yeah. that I can recall at least. That's great, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What what where do you where do you see because obviously we're a different generation, yeah? Mm-hmm. So where do you uh, where do you see um so you've been in connection with uh, these other adoptees through this group yes. we're in, yeah? Um d- where do you see them struggling in in, well, in any sense? So uh, what I well, so re- because I've only recently joined them, right? Somewhere in March. Yeah. Um but the, the, well, at least what I've heard so far is that indeed people are struggling because they have been misdiagnosed, for example, and people think that they have all kinds of issues or they, they misdiagnose the issues they have. People are uh, facing racism yeah. a lot. And that will, of course, also not help with accepting yourself and accepting that you are actually good enough. Um, but yeah, I think it's, it's, I think it's mainly those things that people think there are things wrong with you and tell them to you that they think oh but you don't look the same we do uh you, your face looks funny or something like that right yeah and that's i think what contributes to uh people thinking that they are not good enough but if you don't have that or you don't have it that much then i think um it's easier to accept yourself and to have less of a thought that you're not good enough. Okay. So if we take those one at a time then, so what, what do you mean by the misdiagnosis? What, what are we talking so, about? So, yeah, I've, well, I've heard people indeed that they, they, well, they had, I think it was uh, behavioral uh, things and then they, they, get a, the, they get a stigma, on, well, not a stigma, like a stamp on it saying, well, you now have whatever, I don't know, you are a perfectionist perfectionist or you are you can't connect with people or whatever right and sometimes they are just the wrong thing or that they have ADHD I don't know if it's the same thing in yeah, yeah, yeah but if it's not that thing then it well if you get that stamp on you you also will start to think oh but I have a disorder so yes. most likely I I'm not good enough because if you have a disorder it basically means that you have a defect Yes. Or, so, or people can think that they have a defect, whereas yes. that's not the case, right? Because a lot of, yeah, having a disorder doesn't mean that you are not good enough. Yeah. So um, I interviewed uh, a lady called Estella on the podcast uh, a few months ago, um, and she's an ad- adoptive mum, right? Uh, and she said that uh, she got told by all sorts of people, right, in the medical um she, mm-hmm. she adopted twins from foster care i think when they were two i think that's i think that's how it happened i taught my memory see my memory's going at 54 um and now as i say that i'm kind of kicking myself that i can't remember it so do you mean so this mm-hmm. that, in the dial but luckily i'm not taking too much notice of it right um she was she was given lots of diagnoses by um uh, professionals and we're raised to believe professionals but Mm -hmm. she she talked about how the fact that she just didn't believe these she didn't believe these diagnoses and um i was uh had, had her daughter has just gone into the military and she has um so she's just gone into do the she's just coming towards the end of the basic training uh, and she has been moved into another group because she's in the top 3% of the mm-hmm. intake. So her mother 
refuse to believe these diagnoses rather than buying into them like yeah. we're, we're brought up to buy into believe what people tell us um but she she refused to believe those and bec- i i would suggest that because she there is there there isn't it's, it's not coincidental that her daughter has just come out of the basic training in the top three percent mm-hmm. because her mother refused to to believe those diagnoses yeah. so, um I think I don't know why I don't know why the diagnoses are so negative I guess are the people are the people concerned about are the professionals concerned about being sued if they don't warn if they don't warn of danger you know yeah I I don't know but I I do think a lot of diagnoses lead to things that are not necessarily great. So for example, in the Netherlands, if you're di- diagnosed, I think with ADHD, you have to go through way more hoops to get your driver's license and to get your, your at least your motor, I call, yeah. motorbike license, which is a little bit strange because why wouldn't you, why can't you just be normal? Yeah. And why can't you just do the normal way of doing the driver's license? Because it, it's, it, yeah. I think that's a bit strange because a lot of people with ADHD, yeah. ADHD are perfectly fine to and, and functioning very normal. So why having that that one yeah, step? Yeah, we, we we have a very risk averse society, don't we? I mean, you, you were talking about different diagnoses and and, and stuff like behavioural stuff as well. And I think that's you know we, if we kind of like. We seem to be obsessed with behavior and strategies and and how we're going to fix things and hacks and you know you'll know this from the IT world you know we're looking for we're looking for hacks good hacks obviously mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but we seem to be obsessed with that we, we seem to be obsessed with it but this when the behavior I so I can I can be angry and I can be a you know, throw tantrums and do stupid things. Um, but that's not who I am all the time, you know. Um, I think there's a danger if we kind of link a behavior to an identity, then that, you know, the the essential the essential uh thing that we're talking about here is the the perfection that we are and all these labels that are saying that we're not perfect. Mm-hmm. And if we buy into all this stuff. Then it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Yeah. You know? So for me, when I wasn't good enough at selling, I kept on hiring more people. They didn't work out either. I, I didn't. I, I didn't develop any uh, for as long as I was hiring different people to, to mm-hmm. sell. I didn't develop my own skills. So yeah. like being stuck in that in that not good enough location um or, or mindset to use your word um will just it stops us evolving doesn't it yeah i think yeah. so yeah so that's the diagnosis stuff um what about the racism because obviously I, you know um i i'm i'm a i'm a white guy living in a, a white a very mm. white part of the world so i don't yeah. I, I don't know anything um i've never encouraged uh, i'm sorry i've never um encountered any uh racism i've 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 encountered some classism you know mm-hmm. like um people being upset because um I, I i live in a smarter part of town than them yeah something oh yeah you know, people okay. there was always somebody in a in a smarter part of town than me mm-hmm. there's always somebody you know, <laughs> like um but i never yeah i once and I went to a, I went to a, a, a grammar school, so um, I once got I once got uh, poked in the eye with a, a and 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 hit just because of a school that I went to, you know, mm-hmm. somebody that was angry that I went to this school, um, but I've never encountered any, uh, I've never encountered any racism. So, if there are um, maybe transracial adoptees listening, or you know what. What would you what would you say to them about racism? So well, I think one thing for the parents, at least I think, is that they need to step in as soon as possible as they see it. Because I think what my parents did very well is that once at, at primary school, I was in the first 
first grade, so I was like four years old or five years old, there was this boy who called me names. Say so some I I don't know what the what the translation will be in 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 English, but he he said something about being from China. Yeah. And I told it to my parents and my parents rang up the parents of that boy and the same night or the same evening, he stood at, his fro at our front door uh, making excuses or apologizing for it. Okay. And I, I think what, what that is really do? good. Yeah, it's well, very good. Did he make excuses or did he apologize? Yeah, no, no, he, he did apologize. Oh, right, sorry, he, yes. Yeah, he, yes. sorry, this is just a language he, thing. Yeah, I know. It's a language so thing. So he apologized. He apologized. Yeah, he apologized with his, with his mom. He yeah. was at the door and they apologized. I think that is really, really good. So I do think you have to raise it. Yeah. Uh, definitely if you are like a younger child, you have to raise it to your parents and the parents have to take an action on it. Yeah. whatever they can do and um, as long as you don't raise it people won't be able to help you and most likely you also won't be able to uh, fix it yourself I would say it depends a bit on your age and your whatever right if you are like 20 then most likely you yeah, yeah. you will be a bit better able to fix it yourself or do yeah. something against it and if you're extra extrovert if you're introvert again it's it's more difficult yeah. but you need in a lot of cases it will be useful to have other people who can help you with it yeah because i do think there's only a very small group of people who are actually being racist or or acting uh, or saying things yeah. i think that the majority of the people will not be uh, racist so they will be able to help you and think well what that what that other person did is not good that person should stop doing that have you have you had any since since then? Have you had other incidents of uh, where where you've been subject to this racism? Well, not that much, but there, there were a few things. So I, I think at at at, at uh, high school I had one guy, but he bullied a lot of people. Uh, but he also bullied me, saying that I had a flat face uh, because apparently Chinese people have a flatter face. I don't know. But and then at some point in time, I just was fed up with it, and then I just hit him. I just kicked yeah. and hit him, <laughs> and after that was over. Yeah. And I'm not saying that people should be violent, right? No. <laughs> but it you do have to speak up. Yeah. I think. Yeah. It's interesting, isn't it? Because there there are um. Uh, there are quite a lot of, well, no, see, somebody might be, I got accused of white privilege a couple mm. of months ago. So um, I hope this isn't white privilege, right? So this is just my theory. And obviously it's not lived experience because I'm a white guy. So, um, um, and I live in a white area. I think there's quite a lot of similarities between bullying and racism, it seems to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I've done a lot of work in primary schools, elementary schools on mm -hmm. uh, with, with kids, and some of it was about bullying. And one of the most, uh, well, the two most important things that the kids learn was um, that their feelings are an inside job. Feelings come mm -hmm. from insiders, so nobody outsiders can actually make us feel anyway. Mm -hmm. So our feelings are only ever come from our thoughts. They, they're an inside job. They're, they're not external, right? Yeah. That was the one thing, and and that's huge. You know, you could talk about that. We could talk about that forever, but I'm just looking at the time. You know, um, mm -hmm. the other thing is that they they realise that. Um, bullies make it about us. So for you, they made it about your uh, Chinese people's flat faces. That's what mm -hmm. he, he made it about you and your race, right? I, I got bullied for being at this posh school. I got bullied for <laughs> um, I got bullied for having teeth that stuck out, like like yeah. Bugs Bunny, the rabbit, you know, the cartoon rabbit. Uh, I got. Uh, I got bullied for not drinking tea. <laughs> I, you know, yeah. I, I got. I, they 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 just made all sorts of. Mm -hmm. Um, 
But one of the most important things that the kids got when I talked to them a, a little bit about this, and I'm talking like nine-year-old kids, is that they realized that the um, that what was going on was down to what was going on for the bully. The, 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 the bullies were feeling angry, scared, mm -hmm. sad, lacking control. Yeah. You know? And 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 how they felt was the reason for their behavior. Not it was nothing to do with the victim. It was nothing to mm -hmm. do with the victim's ginger hair or yeah. glasses or flat face or buck teeth. It was nothing to do with them. The kids, the kid, this kids got it. They got the fact that the bully's behavior was because of the bully's mindset. Mm -hmm. And that kind of freed them up because we believe it's about us. We take things yeah. Uh, we take things personally, and when we take things personally, it upsets us. But when we realise it's not actually down to us, it's down to the uh, you know the way the bully was, then that seemed to free them, free them up. Yeah, makes sense, right? Because then it's no longer them having a flaw, but it actually is the other person having a flaw in the sense that they are insecure or angry or yeah. whatever they are. It's them. With the flaw, them with the yeah. problem or the problematic Indeed. Thing, or feeling or something. That's really like that. cool. Yeah, that's a, that's a good one. Yeah. I, and that, that was amazing. That was amazing for me. Yeah. Because for me, that's the essence of empowerment is when we realize that, you know, feelings are an inside job. And, you know, mm -hmm. um, I was, heard some. So I heard some adopted teenagers um, talking on a video the other day, and they seem to they seem to have a big hang up with what the world thought of adopted people. Yeah, I don't know. So you 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 mean that they think it's that they are that they think that wait that they think about how other people look at other people right that's yeah yeah well but that's okay right people can think about what other people think of them as long as yeah, it doesn't they... impact you i guess yeah but they were upset by it oh up upset yeah oh they were upset yeah i just thought well they're going to go through life worrying angry about and upset about what other people think not about mm -hmm. not about them the, the individual but about people in general yeah you know, like what you know, so you would go go i mean what's the alternative so english people would be go through life worried about how scottish people don't like them yeah <laughs> yeah i, I, I don't I, yeah it's it's a losing battle that isn't it I gonna... think it's a yeah you're not going to win that but also that one and it's it's easier said than done for those people most likely also that is a in that sense maybe a, a mindset because who cares what they think about you yeah. as long as you are being you and you are happy with yourself who you are then it it, it uh, doesn't matter what other people think of you in that sense yeah. but it, it's easier said than done of course because I I, I don't want yeah. to minimize or the make it really small what, what they feel right yeah but um it's I, tricky yeah. it's tricky because we talk a lot about validation well mm -hmm. if we're going to validate those people um you know we, we're going to perhaps reinforce it are we am i overthinking this yeah. Well, I don't. I don't think you can overthink stuff, but. Uh... Oh yes, I can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, but I, I think I think yeah, it's yeah. understandable, right? It's understandable yeah. that people are upset by it because they feel less accepted, maybe, because yeah. of the, the 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 thoughts other people have, but then. 
indeed that is the that is I, I just think it's it's just yeah it's it's not it is difficult to get out of that way of thinking I think yeah but it would be good if people can be encouraged and can be supported and helped to get out of that way of thinking because indeed as you mentioned it's a losing game you, you can't win that and there's no reason to be upset by it because as you as you mentioned you are perfect right what other people think of you because they just see you and or just think about whatever thoughts they have around adoption that doesn't make that you are less of a person because if you are happy with yourself and meeting your own success criteria in that sense okay right then yeah. who cares about that then what other people think of it with their in a, in a lot of cases very short short vision short short vision yeah short-minded vision or close-minded vision then that shouldn't matter although it's as mentioned again it's easier said than done and i do know people feel that way yeah but uh there's it would be great if we can support those people and help those people to start seeing it the way that we now discuss that indeed it's it's not it's not them they are perfectly fine the other people just have a don't have enough experience with it just have some random thoughts not based on any on any facts or figures or without having thought about it yeah yeah so um i i brought it up i i brought it up to to kind of mm -hmm. like to bring the belief into the light to shine a light on it and to discuss it so that hopefully it changes one person's mind yeah on the podcast it would that's, be that's that's why i brought it so that would, that would be, be really, really nice that indeed. would be really cool if it did that um that's why i've been laboring the points a little bit because i've been kind of like mm -hmm. trying to bring this stuff up so if we bring this um if we bring these limiting beliefs these limiting beliefs uh you know like they're underground right if we like they're a, a rock underground if we bring those rocks out and we bring them into the sunshine then we see them for what they are um and then maybe we throw them away yeah or you polish them and then they become a diamond ah <laughs> bingo <laughs> so i'm what what do you think we should uh what do you think we should call this episode Ooh, difficult um something around accepting yourself maybe or li living your own life or something with i think with self-acceptance and maybe not that that same word those okay. words why don't we call it why don't we call it what uh, two, why don't we give it two words or four words why don't we call it yours was personal success was it mm -hmm. yeah or, personal success so what if we called it personal success and a loving life or being your own success story being your own success story yes something like could also be something right yeah being your own success story uh what about writing your own success story also yeah yeah but people don't like writing some people don't like writing yeah and, and writing maybe write. it maybe sounds being. like you have to do something something for it but being your own success story is you are already it right uh yes i like that yeah writing sounds like you have to do it in the future doesn't it yeah 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 your but your idea is better than mine so being being your own success story yeah something we'll go like with that, that. nice <laughs> i love it this has been brilliant. <laughs> really cool, this yeah. Really cool. So would you like to come back on in six months' time? Uh, yeah, sure. Cool. Okay. So I'm gonna send you <laughs> I, I'm obviously when I when it's uh, when it's live, I'll send you uh I'll send you a link and okay. um, uh and we'll send you something. And uh, that'll be great. Thank you very much for coming on, Cynthia. It, it's been yes. uh, it's been really, it's been really <laughs> yeah, I really liked it. I've never done a podcast, but it's actually is quite it's quite good it's just having a chat yeah. and i like the, the questions and the, the thinking uh, as, as i mentioned I, I do like to just think about random questions or maybe not random but just questions that you haven't heard necessarily up front because it triggers you to think on the spot yeah and then it does i do think that whatever you say is 
really honest in that sense because it's the first thing that comes to your mind. Yeah. So it also helps or brings your own thoughts uh, a bit up on the table or up. yeah, yeah, above the table, yeah, yeah. So I really like that. Yeah. Great. Thanks. It's been it's been great talking to you, and I hope listeners. Well, if you if you're still listening now, you know. Right? <laughs> 56 minutes in you're probably having fun if you did you haven't had fun they won't be listening anymore so <laughs> we don't know do it <laughs> <laughs> thanks for listening everybody thanks so much thanks cynthia see you yes, soon you're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.